Hello everyone. In this session, we will understand the basics of the microprogrammed control unit. Already we have gone through a control unit. That is, a control unit is used to send the control signals in order to synchronize all the activities of a system. Let us have a recap. CPU is essentially comprised of three parts. One is ALU, second one is the control unit, and the third one is a register set. In addition to which, the CPU motherboard is also equipped with something called main memory, right? You know that the CPU is essentially used for instruction execution. The total computer system is just for the program execution. And if you want to execute the programs, the instructions of the program should be executed one by one by the CPU. For that, CPU will always be engaged in some instruction cycle. Every time when you look at the CPU, it just is busy in executing some instruction all the time. What is instruction cycle? During the instruction cycle, several operations get performed, such as fetching the instruction from the main memory, after which decoding the instruction, followed by execution. During the fetch operation, the instruction will get transferred from the main memory to the registers. That is, that is, the instruction that is needed to be executed will get transferred from main memory to the processor's registers. After fetching has been happened, then decoding phase will come. During the decoding phase, CPU will be able to decode the current operation. Opcode of the current instruction will get decoded to interpret the operation that is needed to be performed. After decoding the instruction, finally, the execution, that is the ALU operation is going to be performed. Now let us understand what is the business of the control unit here. We have already seen how a hardwired control unit is designed. Let us say this is our hardwired control unit. Every control unit is associated with a system clock. System clock gets connected to the control unit directly. The clock job is to release the clock pulses. Using the clock, the system is going to generate the clock pulses, such as T0, T1, T2, T3. In our control unit design, we have designed till T16. That is, our control unit is capable of generating a maximum of 16 clock pulses we have already understood. In the hardwired control unit design, we have designed a clock which has a counter in which the maximum number of clock pulses that can be, you know, designed is T16. That is, 16 clock pulses can be released by the clock. After which, after 16 clock pulses, Again, the clock will be reset to T0, T1, T2, T3. During this T0, T1, T2, there has to be some specific operations performed. That is, during T0, some operation should be initiated within the computer system to start the execution of the instruction. Let us have a quick recap. At T0, if you could remember, the value of the program counter will get transferred to the address register because if you want to execute an instruction initially, the instruction must be fetched from the main memory. So in T0, we are going to initiate fetch operation, rather fetch phase of the instruction cycle. That is, the value of the program counter will get transferred to the address register because the program counter has the address of the next instruction. The value that get um, that is available in program counter will get transferred to the address register that is in T0. Now, the control unit has to initiate the control signals which invokes or activates program counter and address register during T0. Meaning, during the instruction cycle, there has to be three phases, fetch, decode, execution. During the fetch operation, the first operation that is going to be performed is transferring the program counter value to the address register. Now, control unit job is to activate two registers. 
that has to participate in this transfer. One is program counter and one more is address register. Mind you, system doesn't contain only these two registers. System does have many registers. In addition to this, we do have instruction register R1, R2, and we do have memory locations. But the computer system, our control unit, make sure that program counter and address register should get activated during T0. Remaining all the other locations, including the processor's registers and main memory, should not get activated. Only two registers should get activated in T0. Control unit has to send the control pulses, rather control signals, to only these two registers which participates in this transfer. Let us say during T1, memory of the address register will get transferred to the instruction register. During T0, you know that the program counter value gets transferred to the address register. Program counter holds the address part of the next instruction that will get transferred to the address register because the address register will be able to locate the specific address in the main memory at which there is an instruction that has to get transferred to the instruction register. I will show you here. Let us say the program counter is equal to 23. Then 23 will get transferred to the address register. Now address register holds 23. Taking this 23, address register sends a memory reference to main memory. Immediately this address will get located in the main memory in which there has been an instruction. This instruction should get transferred to the instruction register. This is exactly what going to happen during the fetch phase. So in the T1, that is the second clock cycle, at the memory location which is specified by the address register, the instruction will get transferred to the instruction register. Meaning, during T1, our control unit should be able to send the control signals to our address register and the main memory for performing the read operation. After which, the contents will get transferred to the instruction register. Memory is associated with two operations, let us say. One is read. And one more is right. One is read, one more is right. So here, the control unit should also select this read input of the main memory because we are performing reading. We are reading the instruction. So now you can understand what is the job of the control unit. Control unit is just going to coordinate with all the activities that are going to happen in the system during the instruction cycle because every time whatever you do is just nothing but a part of the instruction cycle, right? So for that, control unit is going to take the necessary precautions or steps in which several locations will get initiated, in which a transfer is going to be performed. Let us say after T1, in T2 decoding phase, what is decoding phase? The instruction opcode will get interpreted. After interpreting the opcode, finally the computer system will be able to understand what is the operation performed during this instruction execution. Let us say T2 is just for decoding. During decoding, the control unit is going to decode the opcode. If you remember, opcode in our instruction is in between 12 to 14 bits. Okay, total instruction is 16 bits in which most significant 15th bit is for mode. Next, 14, 13, 12. These three are the opcode bits. Now the control unit should be able to decode these three bits, in addition to which a mode digit will also get decoded. So during the decoding phase, as I told you, the instruction will be interpreted. The operation will get interpreted. After which, the final operation is going to be performed. After decoding, the execution phase will get started. What is the execution phase? The ALU operation. Now let us say the decoded operation is addition. The decoded operation is addition. Let us say in T3, the control unit should be able to send the control signal in which the ALU will be instructed to perform the addition operation because just now, the control unit interpreted the operation of the opcode, that is addition. Then, the control unit is going to send a control signal, a corresponding control signal to the ALU, in which ALU is instructed to perform the addition operation in between 
accumulator and data register why accumulator and data register you know already during the instruction cycle we have clearly discussed the two operands that are going to be participating in the final operation of the alu are just nothing but accumulator and data register now in the t3 the control unit should be able to send a control signal to the alu for, for, for performing the corresponding operation as interpreted in the decoding phase now understand carefully what is the job the job of the control signals control unit is to send the control signals right it will send the control signals okay now let us understand how this control unit is designed this control unit if it is designed by using hard wired logic that is if you want to design the control unit if you choose hard wired logic what is hard wired you collected some combinational circuits what are the different combination circuits half adders full adders half multi multiplexers demultiplexers or encoders decoders counters no counter cannot be multiplexers demultiplexers right so if you collect some combination circuits in addition to a few gates and then if you design your control unit then it is called as a hard wired control unit in the hard wired control unit it is purely the logic is the hardware logic what is the hardware logic the hardware logic send the pulses the control unit is going to send some pulses in order to synchronize the devices in the system within the system but at the same time if you do not go with this hardware logic you also have an alternative what is that this is called micro programmed control unit what is micro programmed control unit let us understand that of course there are a few drawbacks in a hard wired control unit now i just want to use a micro programmed control unit i just from being a designer i chose to design micro programmed control unit if you want to design a control unit by using micro programmed logic you don't need to collect any combination circuits at all rather what you can do is you can program all the control signals you can program all the control signals for programming you do require something called a rom okay so what you do is you program all those all that control logic by means of several routines by using these routines you will be able to send the control signals in which each and every activity of the system is going to get synchronized so if you use this logic of programming then it is called micro programmed control unit in the micro programmed control unit a designer is going to obtain a rom of some capacity in which he will write several routines and stores it then he will use this storage of rom as the control unit of the system here there are no encoders there are no decoders there are no multiplexers and there are no gates simply we just do have some rom it's an additional rom already we know that in the main memory we do have one ram and one rom right this is not this rom obviously our main memory does contain a ram and a rom this rom is different and when you want to design your control unit in the logic of micro programmed control unit then you are going to obtain another rom in which all your control signals are programmed this is called micro programmed control unit in a micro programmed control unit system we do have one more memory unit this is called control memory what is this control memory this control memory is the additional rom in which all the routines are the programs in which the control signals are stored this is what the control memory is all about thank you